Welcome. We are here this evening on August the 23rd, 2021, on Monday night, and we're having our next and last Prophetic Art Connections class for the summer. And uh, next week is going to be our last one. And uh, if you all want to paint at the church next Monday, uh, not Monday, Sunday, Sunday afternoon, let me know. And uh, we will, I just need to have at least two people there. And I will come and we'll, we'll paint and do whatever y'all want to do. So uh, I know that it's kind of towards the end of the summer and school's starting. Things are getting busy. So uh, just let me know ahead of time as much as you can. And then we'll make plans to paint and uh, do whatever. All right. All right. So today the, the, the uh, lesson is called um, uh, Pastor uh, uh, Cameron was talking about um, navigating troubled waters and knowing the waters and it was so funny I, I just tell you if you haven't seen the ser service go back to my page uh, my Facebook page or go to go newsong.com and watch that it is just uh, it's hilarious he has all kinds of funny stories that tell he, he tells about when he was a kid, he did these crazy things. And so it'll just make you laugh. I would, you probably will hear me laughing out loud all the way through. I was almost embarrassing myself. I was laughing so much, you know, but uh, it's very, very comical. But uh, it, very, it gives a lot of visual. You know how we're talking about prophetically things that when we see in the service and we want to draw it that way, um, we um, uh, we can draw it to, to see. Okay, here's the matter. Here's Shalee's sign. When we uh, when we draw what we see, uh, it really makes it come alive. So um, uh, let me just tell you: if you listen to this service with Pastor uh, Cameron, you're going to have a lot of visuals of really funny things that uh, you could draw. So uh, we'll we'll talk about some of those in just a minute, but. Um, so here, the, the lesson also is going to be in comparison to the uh, Enigma book, okay? The lesson from here is from device number nine, and it's called Symbols. And we're going to talk about how they're symbols that God uses in our dreams and visions that helps us to kind of figure out what he's trying to say. Uh, can you think of some kind of stories in the Bible where there were symbols that were used? Y'all can just speak up. Mm. What kind of stories did Jesus tell? Parables. Yes. Parables. Parables. Yes, parables. And <clears throat> In those stories, those parables, what did he what did he use in those stories? You know, can real you, life examples. Yes, that they were, were familiar with at that time. So if that was like a symbol of things that he knew, like them uh, going through the field and gleaning uh, grain from the field. They all knew what that was about. You know, we don't really do that today, but they knew that, you know, um, using talking about clay pots, you know, um, or a spinning wheel and the, the uh, doing a, a pot on the wheel, you know, different things like that. He, he used symbols that um, uh, like working in a vineyard. So uh, I think he still does that today using symbols and pastor. Cameron used some really great symbols in his uh, lesson on Sunday that was a lot of fun. And uh, I'll show you those in just a minute. And I'm going to, I sent a picture. I don't know if y'all got it or not, but um, I'm going to show it to you in just a minute. I'm going to share my screen and we'll go on and look on the, um, on the page uh, that I posted on the Facebook page, the Prophetic Art Connections class. So 
we'll look at that in just a minute. But I just wanted to open in prayer and say welcome to you, Miss Shelley. So I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I just watched your video on your web page. Oh my goodness, that was so cool. And I'm going to share that also whenever I share my screen in just a little bit also. So uh, I want you all to be thinking about things that you all are working on, goals that you're working on, and things that you might want to share about and we can pray about, you know, and encourage you in those goals that you have coming up. Because I know I have lots of goals of things that are coming up in my life. And uh, I don't know whether I'll show all of them, but uh, we can all pray for one another and encourage one another in what those things are. And be thinking about, this is another thing I want you to be thinking about, is when you have dreams and visions, do you have some similar or familiar symbols that God is constantly using in your dreams and visions? Think about that. I know for myself, there's lots of portals, lots of ships, horses. Um, that's one of the things I talk about in, in my, this is the uh, device number nine in the uh, symbols page. I think what I can do is I can put this on, I can, I can share my screen and show that to you real quick. Just I hope I don't miss anybody that they're coming on. Okay, here we go. I just shared this. Um, okay, here we go. This is the second page. This is okay. Here's the first page. Uh, can y'all see that? Okay. I can't hear you. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, so this first page, it talks about these different symbols that are on here. Um, and it's, it says uh, rivers, mountains, cars, buses, trains, rockets, trees, ships, and dogs. Those are things that were showing up in my dreams and visions for several years. And there's another list of them over here. Diamonds, crowns, mountains, children, ships, and tsunami waves. So uh, think about that in your um, thoughts of, of the dreams and visions that you have had and see if there's some things that are reoccurring in maybe your dreams or your visions. And what we're going to do, let me stop share here just a second here. I want you to list all those things. And like, like Nicholas, he saw the earth. He saw the hands of God. So what you can do then, if you get this list of things, then you say, okay, Lord, what are you trying to say to me by showing me these things? What do these represent? And you can do a search. You can do a Google search. Um, you can do research however you want. Uh, you can look up look them up in the dictionary uh, and try to find out like what does this symbol mean or like what I like to do is I like to say what is the prophetic meaning of a pencil what is the prophetic meaning of a ship that sort of thing okay so be thinking about that and make you some notes and then we can share those later and then we can maybe uh, talk about them. Maybe somebody already might know what some of those symbols might mean. And we might be able to help you get some insight into what God is showing you in whatever their dreams or visions might be. Oh, and I just got something in my eye. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. So uh, let me just say a prayer. <laughs> I about jumped in here too fast and I didn't even say a prayer. <clears throat> So Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you are here amongst us and that you gathered up, gathered us here together to uh, look into your word, to try to find meaning. And when you, when you give us symbols, when you give us uh, words and um, images in our dreams and visions and experiences, and I just, I am excited to see what, what God is showing, uh, what you are showing us in uh, the sermon from Sunday about devices and uh, about um, navigating through troubled waters and knowing the waters. Lord, I just pray that you give us wisdom 
as we step into this uh, new beginning of our walk with you from this day forward, finding out what it is that you're trying to say to us through our dreams and visions and helping us to draw them and sketch them and understand what, what it is that you're speaking to us. Give us your word, give us your guidance, give us your understanding. And we just open ourselves up to you and receive all that you have and give us the words to speak and share what you've given us in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So Amen. one of the things that um, uh, Pastor um, uh, Cameron was speaking about was uh, finding the facts. Uh, now, let me just read this scripture first. This kind of sets the, the place. Uh, it's from Luke 14, 28 through 32. Now, think about this. When I'm, when I'm reading through this, think visually, what did you see as I was reading this scripture? And y'all can, you can make a little note and then we'll talk about it afterwards. But uh, just listen. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. A tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? That's twice as many. If he is not able, he will send the delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, Jesus said, those of you who do not give up everything, you have, you cannot be my disciples. Now think about that. Jesus said, if you can't give up everything, you can't be my disciple. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Okay, so from that scripture, which of y'all saw some symbols? What did you see? I saw food. You saw food? Yeah. Okay. Like, which would be provision? No, just like giving up food. Like, oh. just being willing to give up food. Oh, I being... also saw... saw um, like mouth, like um, like your words, like a mouth, like, like what like, you say, yeah. Okay, very good. Look what you say is powerful. Yeah, very good. What else? Anybody else? I, I saw a tower. Yep, that was one of the first things that I saw too. Was a tower. Mine was ruins. What'd you say? Ruins. Like um, old buildings. Say it again, Nicholas. I said ruins, ruins, like old buildings. Oh, old ruins. buildings, old buildings, ruins. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah, ruins. Okay. And what did you think that applied to? Um, maybe the unfinished buildings or when they went to war. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very good. I also saw money. And money. Yeah. Because if you don't count the cost and how much it's going to cost you, you might get halfway through and not be able to finish it. Yes. Anything else? What about a king? Yes. You know, the two kings and the battle, the, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, looking at a field and over on one side, there's 10,000 and on the other side, there's 20,000, you know, and are, is, the ten, or is, the, is the king with the 10,000 really going to go on against the one with the 20,000? Ooh, 
you have to really know that God is saying go. Who was the who was the the king that um, was it uh, Nebuchadnezzar? Uh, where there was the battle, there was like three different uh, uh, nations that were coming against Israel, and he said. God said, go and send Judah first. And Judah was the worshipers and the praisers and the musicians. And he said, let them lead the way and worship as they go. And what happened? Do you remember? What happened was is the, the enemies that were attacking, they ended up being all confused. They started battling against one another, even within their own ranks, and they destroyed one another. I mean, totally destroyed all the, those all those that were battling. And it's like, by the time Judah got there, or by the time Israel got there, they were all gone, and they're all dead, and they had left the spoils, and it took them days to bring in the spoils that were left. And they didn't have to battle at all. But what did they do? They obeyed God. They praised the Lord. They sang. They worshiped. Isn't Worship. that something? So they were outnumbered. But yet God said, go. And so they knew the voice of the Lord. And they obeyed what God said. He said, Send the worshipers first, send Judah first, and uh, they won the battle. There was a, a, a the church that we went to in, uh, uh, I guess it was Stillwater, Oklahoma. Uh, our associate pastor was a music leader, and he had a song called Send Judah First. And he'd say, send Judah first, and the battle will be won. Send Judah first, and the battle will be won. And I don't even remember all the other words, but it was like I had that in my mind that, you know, I could see this this band, you know, and these musicians that were singing and marching forward. And uh, the and then when they got there, the battle was already won. So it's like, OK, Lord, show us how to praise you in the midst of a battle when it seems impossible and just thank you in advance for the results and for the answers so um and so there's another there's another there's a what is the number one symbol of christianity that cross. you can think of the cross the cross yeah and i have one on here this is the cross you can see it here up there with the with the wind the white and the purple a cross and what do you think, when you think of the cross, what do you think of? I think Jesus. of Jesus. Jesus, yeah. What else do you think of with Jesus, with the cross? A perfect sacrifice. Perfect sacrifice. Yes, yes. Now, what about this scripture where it says, pick up your cross and follow me? That's what Jesus said, right? Pick up your cross and follow me. What do you think that meant? What can you see in your mind? Who picked up their cross and carried their cross to Calvary? Jesus. Jesus okay. did. I, if we all saw the, the passion, uh, we remember seeing that picture that video of Jesus carrying that cross. It was horrible. And what that symbolized was, if you're going to pick up your cross and follow Jesus, you better be ready to be martyred. Mm -hmm. Because in by, when, when Jesus first started, you know, when he, after he, he was killed on the cross, the Romans that's the way they killed people. They tortured them by hanging them on a cross. And so what Jesus was saying, hey, you've got to be willing to go to the cross if you're going to follow me. And I think about the people in Afghanistan 
those people in Afghanistan, there are some there that they know they're going to die. And I think there's already some who have died who are Christians. And it's just because they are Christian, they are having to die. I'm thinking, how can this be happening in our day and age? But it is. So, you know, to pick up your cross and follow Jesus really is saying, I'm willing to die for my belief and to stand with Christ. That's powerful, isn't it? You know, you think, yeah. I, I, I want to believe that I, I mean, I don't think I'd ever want to deny Christ. You know, I don't ever hope I, if I'm never in that kind of a situation where I have to make a decision to say that. But, hey, you know, we know we have to. If we want to go to heaven, <laughs> that's what we're going to need to do. So that was the number one symbol that, I, that really stood out in my mind. So let me jump over here, back over here to the troubled waters. We talked, I think we talked a little bit last week about troubled waters doesn't always mean that it's just a rocky, bad road or maybe a storm. What was, what's another troubled water that could be kind of on a positive note? Do you remember? What could be something that could be like troubled waters, but it's not really a bad thing? Change. Change? Yep. And there was, huh? Oh, He's go ahead. It. Oh, um, there was, uh, was it the man at Bethsaida where he was waiting for the angel to stir up the water so that he can get in for healing? Yeah, there you go. And it was just one person that could get into that. Now, what about, um, okay, so like an example that we had was we had this Easter egg hunt. And we had this helicopter that came in and dropped thousands of eggs down on the front lawn of the, of the church. And we had, I think about, I don't, do you remember Abby, how many came actually? I think it was like 500 people actually. I think it was more than that because there was three, at least 350 cars. I think they said between 1,000 and 1,500 people. <laughs> and it was a good thing. It was a good problem. But it was like way more people than we had any uh, anticipation for. And they were trying to find parking places for all these cars. They filled up the whole yard in the back behind the church. They couldn't do it in the front because that's where they were dropping the eggs. And then there was a parking lot over on the side where there was another church, they parked them there, they parked them across the street and down the highway. And then there was a, a strip mall up the road, they filled that up. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a good problem. I mean, we had lots of people and, and they, they, they had a lot of helpers, but they really needed more. I mean, I was painting faces and uh, they ended up recruiting about six other people to come in and paint faces. They said, well, I've never done this before, but I'm going to do it. You know? <laughs> so it was a fun thing, you know, but that was a troubled water situation that you had to keep your head think, okay, what are we going to do, you know, to keep everybody safe and do what you want us to do, Lord, to bless everybody. And uh, what was the other one? Um, oh, there's a man who builds swimming pools in our church. And he has, I think he said, 40 orders for swimming pools to be built. 40 swimming pools. That's a lot. And, you know, to build one swimming pool, there's a lot that goes into that. You know, he's been, they were showing on Facebook, uh, I don't know who it was exactly, but I'm sure it was this, the same guy that made, is building uh, these, these um swimming pools but um it was it's taken a lot of time they had to dig it all out they had to grade it they had to finish it up they had to line it I mean there's a lot to it you know so that's a good problem you know those are troubled waters it's like okay is he going to uh, hire other people to help him or is he just going to put everybody on a waiting list you know how are we going to do this you know so you, there could be a good troubled water as well so um 
so let's look on down just a little bit further about what some of the how to know these waters and um we'll we'll i'm going to ask you some questions as we go along so these are the some of the things that he says that we need to do he said find the facts or research why do you think so many people skip this part about doing the research like you know uh, if you find the facts so you're going to say you're going to build swimming pools you know find the facts of you know what's it going to cost you know and uh, how long is it going to take and all that sort of thing why do you think so many people skip over that part of research they get in a hurry get in a hurry no what else uh, it takes time to research. Say it again. He said it takes time to research. It takes time to research. Yes. And it's it's hard work. You know, it's not something that's easy. You have to do a lot of reading and asking questions and looking all around. So that's probably right. Why a lot of people don't do that. Okay. Um, the second thing is calculate the risks. So um, how much money is it going to cost? Is my life in danger? <laughs> Am I going to be able to sleep? If we step into this venture, are we going to have a peaceful night or am I going to be worrying day and night? So is there, is there going to be, is the loss or the, is the gain more than what the loss could be? You have to weigh that out, you know, what, what's, what's, what's at risk? And, and what's uh, something when you talk about risk, um, it's like, is fear involved? Or do we have to really step out in faith on this situation? I'm wondering, can you think of any any kind of examples for calculating the risk for doing something? Um, when Peter stepped out of the boat to walk on the water, he was taking a risk that he could drown. Very good. Yeah. Could I say something that would be like modern day? Yeah. Like, there could be a risk about inviting people to church. Like, you don't know if they would think you're weird or tell gossip about you. That's perfect. That's true. We're, we're afraid to, we think, well, wait a minute, what are they going to think? You know, yeah, that's a good one, Abby. That's a real good one. How about you, Olivia? What about, I mean, you've taken a big risk and a big step of faith. To yeah. plan to go on your mission trip. Yeah, what I was gonna say was um really just having faith in God is a huge risk because especially like for what I'm doing, it's it's kind of like um I don't know what's gonna happen. And I'm throwing everything that I have into what God says is gonna happen, and I just have to trust that is going to work out yes it's a big step of faith isn't it yeah just and, having faith in general is a risk and you know like um raising the money the funds to go yeah you know there's a lot involved there you know um how close are you to your goal I'm uh, 11,000 and some change cl close to my goal. So and I have to raise 15,800. 15, oh. oh, wow. So you have about 5,000 left that you need? Yes. Well, okay. 4,000. 4,000? 4, 4,000. Yes. So we want to stand in agreement with you. So we're going to pray right now, just in agreement. Lord, we just pray for the supernatural intervention 
the provision for Olivia, all $4,000 plus extra for her to have. So there's no, there's no uh, lack in any area for her to go on this mission trip. She's got a short amount of time left for it to come in. But we declare, Lord, that you're going to bring it in quickly. And uh, it'll be miraculously. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. Very good. So that's a very good example. All right. And then, then another one is uh, react rationally. It's important that we act rationally um like being calm and not getting angry um what is uh, like um uh, let's see here that's a scripture that goes with that one okay that's um it says proverbs sixteen thirty two. Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. Better a patient person than a warrior. Somebody who's a warrior, he's ready to fight at the drop of a hat. Sometimes that could get you into trouble. Somebody could get hurt and you don't really accomplish anything. You cause another problem. So. Um, One of, the, one of the stories that uh, Pastor Cameron told about was really kind of funny. It was a lady that um, she had Tourette's and she kind of kind of jerked. And then sometimes, uh, you know, she would get angry and she would say curse words. And she had this fear. She was kind of always afraid that the FBI was going to come and get her. So um, she had she got upset about something. And um, was screaming and hollering. These some one of the kids in the church did something, and she just started cursing and and yelling, and and it was like got worse and worse and worse. And um, uh, Pastor Cameron went out and tried to calm her down, and uh, he he called her um, what was it, Cameron uh, Carmen San Diego. And so he said, you know, Carmen San Diego, you're going to have to calm down. You got to quit this, you know. Well, she just got louder. Well, Miss Rachel, uh, uh, Abby's mom. My mom. <laughs> she went out to talk to this lady, and the lady just got even more violent. She pulled her up by her her shirt <laughs> and was in her face and was screaming at her and cursing even more. That was, uh, he said, that it would embarrass a sailor. The words that she was saying so she backed off and she said i don't think i can do anything you know well pastor got upset and he said she's violated my bride because they hadn't been married very long and he went out after her and was fussing at her and he said you know what if you don't stop this cursing if you don't stop doing what you're doing i'm going to call the fbi and i'm going to tell them right where you are <laughs> and so she took off running and he said she didn't see her. He never saw her again. So sometimes you need to know what the fear is, what your enemy is afraid of to be able to use to come against the attacks, you know. But I just thought it was funny. You know, I mean, it, it was not a funny situation, I'm sure, for them whenever they were in the middle of that. But keeping, you have to be ready to, um, you have to be rational. Now, he might not have been totally rational, but yet uh, he took the bull by the horns and he uh, took care of the situation. So, uh, so uh, react rationally as you can. And the fourth one is act strategically. You know, how important is it that we act strategically? It says uh, in Proverbs 29, 11, fools give full vent to their rage, but the wise bring calm in the end. So it's important that we be wise and to be calm and be strategic whenever something is happening. Um, if you're strategic, you can get more accomplished. If you make a plan, 
you say, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this time, and that time, and that time, and I'm going to take this many days to do it. Do give yourself some goals and some parameters. You're able to get more done in a day. Something I, I got, I don't know if I shared this with you. I got a planner. It's a, it's a, it's a planner where you go through and you, you, you plan what you're going to do and you make little containers of time so that you can make good use of your time. And I'm learning how to do it. I don't always do perfect, but I'm getting better and I'm writing it down. So that's a strategy that I'm doing. Um, so Olivia, do you have a strategy for you're planning going on your mission trip. Um, what about your t-shirts? No. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I you? mean, I for for fundraising, yeah, I I sell t-shirts. <laughs> this this t-shirt. I love it. You can see. I wore mine the other day. <laughs> yeah, and I also um, power wash. I I created a business to raise to help me raise funds. I and guess that's the only this... plan. What is yeah. that? I think I said that's the only plans that I've really made. <laughs> Those are good plans. <laughs> so you wash cars. You sell t-shirts and hats yes. and uh, jewelry. There's a, a bracelet. So yeah, that was a good strategy. Very good. And um, Ms. Shalise, she started, she started a new, uh, she started a website. She started a business, a ministry to help people uh, with her using her art to help them to, uh, uh, by drawing art, to overcome their problems with uh, cancer, right? Yes. And you had some strategies and what, what did you do? You had some help. You went to somebody that could give you some counsel about websites and yeah. branding and what, can you tell us just a little bit about, about that? Uh, yes, for, first I hired an executive coach to walk me through um, what he felt the steps were in, in, in uh, beginning the nonprofit. Um, then I hired a brand coach to help me with the brand. Uh, then I hired a graphic designer to design the logo and my business cards and the brochures. Yeah. Wow. So you didn't try to do it all yourself. No, I got help in at every step of the way. Yes. Yes. So Ooh. that was really, um, that was just a great strategy, you know, and he did it over time. It wasn't just, you didn't just jump in, you know, uh, you might've jumped in, but yet you made some plans and got some help and got some guidance, got some wisdom and yes. God helped you put it all together. So that's, yes. that's really good. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and your website looks wonderful and we're going to show it in just a minute here. Yeah, now that's, <laughs> now that's my painting website. The nonprofit website is still being created. <laughs> Okay, that's so cool. I that is so awesome because let me just tell you, I I haven't been successful at doing the the website thing. I still get hung up, you know. I'm doing good to get this Zoom doing, <laughs> you know, to do these classes, you know. But in due time, you know, you do what God tells you to do, and you you uh, take it a step at a time. Yes. You can't do everything all at once, you know. You have to uh, put priorities first, you know. Yes. So. So what about you, Abby? Have you had anything that you had to be strategic about that you had to make some special plans about? What about your dance that you did? Oh, yeah. That was um, so cool. <laughs> well, usually um, I'd spend my free time reading or playing or drawing. And I was a little disappointed that I had to go and practice, but I found a lot of joy and fun practicing. So I'm glad I did it. Yeah. So how many days did it take you to learn that dance? How many were there? Six of you? Um, yeah. So we practiced 
like four hours the first day and like about two hours the next time and 30 minutes the next time. We practiced three days, four hours the first day, two hours the second and 30 minutes um, the last one, last day. Well, I must say y'all look pretty professional up there. I was so proud of y'all. I said, I know those kids. <laughs> Y'all can go online and uh, you can look at gonewsong.com and you can see them. Now, is that what is Go New Song Online? I think so. Yeah, gonewsongonline.com. Or you can go to my Facebook page and um, uh, I've got it posted there uh, at the top. You can see it from Sunday. And you can see where Abby and all these kids, there was what, three boys and there was JT, Caleb, and Cohen, and then Maddie, Grace, um, Caitlin, and me. So there was three boys and three girls. Okay. And they were all about the same age, or about how old were they all? Um, all of us were about the same age, except Cohen, and he was seven. Okay. So y'all about 10 or 11, mm -hmm. something like that. Well, they did a great job, and there was a lot of strategic planning they had to do on that, and uh, I mean, it was a great success. Now, who who planned what to do? Was it something one person did, or did you all work together on it, or how did you plan what you were going to dance, how you were going to dance? Well, Kaylin, she, she's a really good dancer, and she actually won the World Series for Miss Dancer in America. Oh my so, goodness. So her and Caleb, they literally won Mr. and Mrs. America for the best dancers in America this year. So that is amazing. I didn't know that. So they just came up with the dance. Wow. So they've got a lot of experience mm -hmm. planning dances and they've been dancing for a long time. So they mm -hmm. were the ones that kind of came up with it. Well, yeah. Well, y'all did great, and I'm just really, uh, really amazed at how well that went. And it's called New Dance, right? Mm -hmm. New, New dance. dance. New Dance and New Song, mm -hmm. and it's for the youth. Yes. So that was really cool. So it was very good. So, Nicholas, have you got something that you had to be strategic about? Um, not really. I mostly just draw and play game. You most did what? I mostly, I mostly draw and play game. You mostly draw? And play game. And play games? Yeah. You play basketball? I used to. Yes. I, so stopped, I stopped when COVID arrived. Oh yes, yes. So playing, uh, playing um, uh, basketball, you have to have a strategy, right? Oh, did we lose somebody? Uh, maybe she'll come back on. Um, so that's uh, that's kind of a neat thing, you know, to to learn how to uh, be strategic with with basket with basketball. You have to be a team player. You have to learn how to how to do the plays and all that sort of thing. So. Um, so let's move on. And so let me just ask you this. Um, when you're facing trouble, how can you keep calm? Pray. Pray. Yeah. Um, quoting scripture. Quoting scripture, thinking about scripture. Yeah. Yeah. Med meditating on the word. Mm -hmm. Meditating on the word. When I'm, when I'm stressed out, I'll get a piece of paper and I will just doodle scriptures and then I'll doodle a bunch of pictures and whatever all around it. And that calms me down. That's really cool. I like that. Doodle, doodle to calm yourself down. I love it. You know, praying in tongues is what I do. If I get afraid or if I get uh, stressed out, I'm just, I start praying in tongues. I just automatically do it all the time. I just, I just pray in the spirit, you know, so, so, uh, so that's really good. So, um, let's see here. So, um, 
if you have any kind of goals or something that uh, each of you have, we kind of touched on that. Uh, if you have some, some future plans or something uh, that you would like for us to pray about, well, we can do that. Uh, I know Abby got the, uh, the dance, the new dance. And um, uh, Shalise has got her ministry and her, her website and uh, her painting. And Nicholas, have you got something that we need to be praying for you about that you have some plans for? Well, I'm planning on doing more drawings and selling them. Ooh. I also want to learn um, digital art. Musical art? Digital, digital art. Oh, digital. Very good. Yes. Yes. I love digital art. I haven't done any in a while, but that's really awesome. And then, of course, Olivia is planning on going to um, on her mission trip. So we need to pray for her on that. And uh, mine is with my business. I'm a health coach as well as teaching the prophetic art. And I've got to have a way to have both of them work so I can develop an income. And so that's what I'm praying about is uh, to uh, be successful in both areas so that it can create an income for a uh, future. So those are some things that we can kind of think about and pray about. And we will do that in just a minute. But I wanted to look, I want you to look at these things. I'm going to show my screen just real quick here. Um, let's see here. How do I do that? All right. These are some items that um, Pastor used um, in the sermon yesterday on Sunday. These things right here. Can you see them? Okay, so there's like, think about what, what kind of things do these uh, images make you think of? It reminds me of camping. Camping. Camping, okay, very good. What else? Yeah, that's true. All of it looks like a camping uh, uh, set up to go camping. That's really good. Hiking. Hiking. Okay. What about just just the clock and the it's the clock and a calendar. Hmm. When you think about a clock and a calendar, think about that prophetically. What does that make you think of? that it's time to do something or time to stop doing something. That's good. Time to do something or time to stop doing something. That's good. Yeah. And being on time. You know, don't miss the chance. You know, God gives you a day. He gives you a time. We be, need to be ready to start. Mm -hmm. So what about the compass? That's direction. Direction. That direction in which God is pointing you. Yeah. What were you going to say, Abby? That reminds me of like being lost, but something helps you find your direction in that's, the right path. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, because usually you have a compass so you won't get lost. Yes. Yeah, that's really good. And what about the flashlight? To see in the dark, to yeah. light, your, light your path. Light your path, see in the dark. The light gets rid of the darkness. Yes. That reminds me of like God making a path for you in your life. Yeah, that's a good one. What is it, the scripture it says? My word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Uh oh, Charlotte. I think she's frozen. Oh. 
I sent her a mess. Uh oh. Lost her. Hopefully she can get back in. We were watching Strange. I sent her a message, but she hasn't answered yet. Now, you, you want us to get out and, and come back in? Yeah, yeah, we're all still on.
Can you yeah, I, it, it might have made me host. So you, if you come back in, I should be able to let you in. There you are. Now you just need to turn on your camera. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Awesome. Well, so y'all, was it still recording, you think, Paul? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the light is on. Yeah, it stayed on the whole time. That is wild. Isn't that something? Right when we were talking about that very thing, about being connected, what were we talking about? When you're facing troubles, uh, stay calm? Or what was the other thing? What were... <laughs> um, yeah, when you were talking about... Um, how to fight how to deal with stress and then we uh we said prayer and quote scripture meditate on the word you said use your prayer language oh and then we were on flashlight yeah on the flashlight oh, you, asked, you asked about the the verse and it's um thy word is a, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path there you go isn't that something yes you know uh oh you know god is good about making uh examples <laughs> And then the last one is the a lighter. What do you think about on that? Hmm. It reminds me of power. Power? Yeah. Yeah. Because we have to have, you know, like gas to run our, our engines, you know. Uh, 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 what is it? The, what are those things that if the power goes off, you they uh generator generator yeah you have to have gas and, and it has a fire and then also the hot water tank you know uh car well i'm thinking light a fire in me right. mm -hmm. you know let the fire of the holy spirit burn in me you know i can't get it to go I oh there we go uh, <laughs> light a fire in me lord you know yeah. So that's what that one is for. And then this is the last one. Well, did we talk about this one? Did we talk about this one yet? No. Uh, this one is, uh, it looks like you can cut paper with it, but it opens up. You turn this little thing right here, mm -hmm. and there's a knife that comes out, and it's sharp. Mm -hmm. So what does that make you think of? Mm. Prophetically. Hmm. The word of God cuts like a sword. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Another thing would be cutting out things in your life that don't really help you. You yeah. know, what yeah. about friends that are trying to get you into trouble? When, when you listen to these stories that Pastor Cameron's telling about, he talks about these, these friends that were constantly trying to get him into trouble. And several times he made the decision to not follow with them and he got out of trouble but the other ones got into trouble and they ended up getting kicked out of school so learning to have the right connections with friends and cutting them out of your life sometimes that can be really hard you know uh, but if you know somebody is just pulling you down or they're they're constantly trying to do something to get you into trouble it's best to get them out of your life, you know, and uh, sometimes that's not real easy, but um, it's the best thing, you know, to do. So that's with that. Um, and uh, let's see here. All right. So I think we've pretty well covered everything. Have you guys got any comments or questions or anything when you think about uh, symbols? Did y'all think of some symbols that were in your dreams and visions? Let's talk about that for just a minute before we close. Um, I see snakes sometimes. Like I did a, a like two sketches, mm -hmm. and in both of them there were snakes. Wow! Did you ask the Lord what that meant? Um, he told me that it was probably Satan. Do you want to see what I just sketched? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Um. Okay, so 
I have a snake and there's a foot crushing it. And uh-huh. I have the words fear, risk, loss, and death with the snake. And then I have with the foot crushing, quick to forgive, love, goodness, peacefulness, faithfulness, gentleness, peace, slow to get angry, joy, and kindness. Oh, very nice. Oh, very good. Yay. So wonderful. So all of that, oh, the yes. joy and peace and all that was that foot coming down on the head of the of the snake. So the mm-hmm. snake represented uh, Satan trying to do bad things or cause bad things to happen. That's really good because you you were showing how God gave you control with the word and with your actions. You know, you putting your foot down, making that decision. That's real good. I love that. Can you take a picture of that and send it to me? Okay, I'll ask my mom to. Okay, that's good. Anybody else? Some symbols that you might have in your dreams and visions. I end up with a lot of birds in my in my paintings. Yeah. I've done quite a few that the bird was the focus. And what do you think the bird represents? Um, it could be freedom. I know sometimes there it's it's a dove, so it's representing the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um and then I'm not sure what the you know what the other ones what you know what they represented yeah 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 that's one true. When, i'm sorry one was for um the end of the flood when when noah sent out the raven and sent out the dove so that was hope there was peace yeah. yes you know there's a future yes there's a lot in that yeah, yeah. <laughs> very good how about you nicholas Did we lose Nicholas? Let me show you this right here while he's, we think he's coming back on. This is one, this is a painting that I did. It's not really a prophetic painting. Mm -hmm. I did it in a painting class um, a long time ago. But when you think, when you look at this, what do you see prophetically? Mm. butterflies are new beginnings and uh, represent transformation or transforming your mind yeah what about those peacock feathers hmm. what do you beauty think beauty to the world say it again beauty to the world adding, adding beauty, beauty to the world okay yeah yeah, that's all I could come up with was beauty. I'm not sure what they stand for. I think that it's like an eye. Yeah. So it's like the eye of the Lord. Oh, okay. It's like a, it's a prophetic eye. Okay. They, they say that the peacock feathers represent the prophetic eye. Okay. Of seeing things in the spirit. Okay. And so it's like you see things in the spirit and then there's new beginning. It's, you know, there's transformation. I mean, our lives change when we get filled with the Holy Spirit and we start seeing things happening prophetically, our lives are changed. Now, what about the color blue? What do you think the color blue represents? Um, I don't know if this would be anything related, but I had a sister that had died and she loved butterflies and some people in my church, they would have dreams about her. And in all the dreams, they would have a blue butterfly. And ah. she just loved fairies and that kind of stuff. And in all our portraits that we have, we always have a little blue butterfly pin or try to wear that kind of stuff for her. How cool. I did not know that. How cool is that? That's really neat. So one of the things about blue is that it's um, it represents religion or the church or the prophetic. It represents bringing heaven to earth. Um, blue sky is like dreaming. You know what is you know your your greatest dreams could be in the blue sky. You know the great far beyond. So. 
So this could be, it became, it, to me, it's like it's become a prophetic painting and I didn't plan for it to be in the beginning, you know. I just like the butterfly and I like the peacock feathers, <laughs> you know, so. And it was a teaching, it was a teaching example, you know, for whenever I was teaching the class, so. So that was kind of cool. Um, so I think that we've got about everything um, that we, we plan to talk about. Uh, now, there was one thing I was going to share. Uh, this is um, uh, Eddie um, Laura La he was He painted this. Uh, uh, when we had our last painting day uh, for the, the summertime, I mean, the summer, springtime. And uh, he was asking me the other day, am I going to get my picture back? And I said, yes, I will bring you your picture back, you know. <laughs> but he, he was seeing how God saw him was like a, a lab dog that was uh, loyal and uh, compassionate. And uh, I'm not sure what all the other, uh, says, the work of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. So it's like uh, a dog is very uh, trusting and loving and they're um, uh, loyal, you know. So it's like he was saying that, that the Lord saw him as being a loyal person, like a dog, like a, a, a lab dog. I thought that was kind of cool. And then this is the one that his wife did, Mary. Uh, she did it about with her name. That was her name, uh, Mary, down here. And uh, said, teacher, daughter of the most high God, joy, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Obedient, Luke, fireball, oh, Luke 128. She's a fireball, encourager, and laughter. I thought that was just really cool. So you can think about what you might want to paint. If you want to paint something this week and share it next week, please do. And um, if uh, you want to come and paint at the church with me on uh, next Sunday afternoon, uh, we probably won't videotape it. But uh, if you want to come, let me know if you want to come and uh, paint with me next Sunday afternoon. Uh, so I know for some who might be watching this after the recording, let me know if you'd like to come and join us. So I guess we're ready to, to close. Um, I'm glad that y'all were with us today, and I'm excited that uh, y'all are growing in your, your uh, hearing the voice of the Lord, and uh, I'm excited to see what God is doing in your life as far as prophetic drawing, and I hope that it won't stop even after next week. We will have a class next Monday night also, so um, uh, uh, be looking for what the Lord is trying to say in your dreams and visions and your experiences, and take note of it. Make a sketch of it. Have a journal. I started something new. I have a I have a special journal that I'm going to leave by my bed, so that if if the Lord speaks to me, I'm going to have something. And um, it was interesting that uh, just a really quick thing here. When I woke up this morning, um, I heard the Lord say to me. It was kind of a weird thing. He said, uh, "Let's see what he say." Um, no, I'm not finding it here. It was just kind of a strange saying, and I thought, what does that mean? And I just wrote it down, um, uh, and I started asking the Lord to give me information about what it meant, and said, so, yeah, I'm not even finding it here. Oh, here it was. He said, and now this is weird. It said, not around the creeks of sensitivity. I'm thinking, what is that, you know? And so I just started, I just, just did a Google search uh, about creeks and about sensitivity. And it was talking about um, how, where you're on a special shoreline where there's an ocean comes together and you've got a mountain there and you've got creeks that are coming. You've got fresh water and you've got ocean water. And with those, the, the edge of the, the, the waters along both places, you have special kinds of uh, critters that can live there. Some that live in the ocean can't live in the freshwater. Those who are in the freshwater can't live in the ocean. And there's a coming together of those things. And then there's another species that can only exist in that, in the in-between place. I'm thinking, what is that all about? Other than I'm thinking, well, 
we're all coming together from different places in our lives. You know, we have different environments, with different lifestyles, you know, different uh, histories, you know, in different futures. But yet God, wow. is, whoops, God is pulling us together with oneness of the spirit. You know, his Holy Spirit is pulling us together and his anointing and guidance is going to uh, connect us and help us to be successful in what he has called us to do. So, all right, you all, I guess we can say good night now. And thank you for coming. And hopefully we'll, uh, you'll leave me some pictures. I go on the website and leave some pictures. I'd love to uh, see some things added. I added, oh, I did add, uh, I did show Nicholas's drawing. Oh my goodness. Should I show that real quick? Let me show that real fast. I can share my screen real fast. And I want to show him, show his picture that he drew. Okay, let's see if I can find this here. Well, wait a minute here. All right. Uh, I need to go to Facebook. Okay, there it is. And go up one. Because I put it in right at the beginning. Let's see here. There it is. This is what he's working on. So, Nicholas, can you tell us about this? Um, I was <clears throat> um, improving the uh, prophetic art, the sketch that I had done with um, God holding the world, the earth in his hand and with the star. Yeah, uh, I'm going to finish it hopefully this week. Yeah, I'm going to try and finish it this week. The only thing I've left to do is um, the earth and the star. Very good. So, yeah. I love it. You are very talented with perspective. You see how he's got the hand of Jesus holding the earth? And you, back behind him, that's Thank the you. arm and the, the sleeve of Jesus. I love that. You know, wow. getting hands is a hard thing to do. Very hard. And you have done very it. Hard. <laughs> yes. Very hard. Very, very hard. That was... That was not the initial hand. I was drawing a different hand before, but it was too hard. But I ended up liking this hand better. Oh, I love it. It looks really good. It looks yes. really, really good. Yeah. And I love the, the way it's like his arm is reaching down, you know, out of the sky and holding it like it's a little ball. I love that. Yes. You know, that one of, isn't that something? Yes. Very so, nice. So let me, if y'all send me some pictures, I'll, and if you're okay with it, I will post them on the, in this page so that other people can see them. And uh, if other people have pictures that they draw, well, I'll be glad to add them as well. I think you can add them to, um, uh, oh, I, oh goodness, I didn't show these one. I was gonna show this one. Uh, there was oh, this. I, I sent you a picture, Charlotte, of one that I'm working on. You um, did? It's, yeah, it's not finished though. Okay. Now this is one that um, Jennifer Bryan sent. If you want one to go on there, she was uh, she goes to my my daughter in law my son's church, and uh, she was sh showing the, her pictures that she had been drawing to my uh, my daughter in law, and uh, she said. Um, uh, oh, you need to show these to my mother-in-law, Charlotte, uh, because she does prophetic art. And she says, oh, these aren't really prophetic art. But I'm thinking, they are amazing. Now, let me just see if I can put on here what she read. It's a little bit interesting. It says, uh, hard to navigate. She says, over the last couple of months, certain sermons I've heard from in church, I watched online, have awakened a, a piece of me I haven't tapped into in years. I'm generally a note taker. But when this first started, I felt the Holy Spirit challenge me to put away the notes and just listen. As I began to listen, I'd see pictures in my mind and went with the words spoken. A couple of days later, a strong prompting in my spirit led me to find a sketchbook and begin to put what I'd heard onto paper. Let me see if I can see what else is written here. Okay. Oh, there's a lot of other words here. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to read all those words. You can go back and read those. But um, uh, she let me just uh, click on them and let you see. 
Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. She has all of these uh, details that she put in there. Uh, and you can go and look at them and uh, see the details. This is the first one that she showed me was this one about um, uh, danger. And uh, who's that? Um, it was in the Alice in Wonderland, I think. Mm -hmm. I think that's what that is, is Alice in Wonderland. And these others I hadn't seen. But there's just so much detail in them and uh, so very, very cool. Okay. Isn't that cool? So there you go. Uh, so uh, it's just another way that you can, um, as you're listening to the service, whether you're online or whether you're in the church, have a sketch pad or have a journal and make notes and see what the Lord shows you. You know, when you, let me just tell you, when you listen to the sermon, if you listen to the sermon from Sunday, there's a lot of funny images, a lot of great images that you maybe can come up with and um, draw from. So, all right, y'all, we're going to say good night. And God bless you. So glad you were here. And um, I hope that the Lord brings you many, many dreams and visions and you dream in color. <laughs> all right. God bless. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome.